there. It is 6.59. So let me start telling you what we're going to do because people have been waiting around. We're going to look at my braided neckbands. Now, why would you do a braided neckband? Well, simply, if you mess up the neckband, then you, it, I didn't want to have to redo it. So I just put a braided neckband over the top. So that was my reason for doing it. And the first time I did it, that, that was the reason. And then this one, I actually did decide to do a braided neckband because you can't beat dramatic necklines, I think, especially as you get older. So that is what we're going to cover. And it's super easy. And somebody said they like the color on me. It's my favorite color. Now, why would it be my favorite color? Probably because it's the best color for me. So think about what your favorite color is and does it make you shine? So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead you through making it. I'm going to do it on a slideshow and then I'm going to actually demo it on the Triumph. So let us begin. And as I said, this is a new program for me, so it makes me slightly nervous. We're getting there. We're getting there. So I'm going to move you on to sharing my screen. But first of all, I need to go to another picture. And then you're seeing the wrong thing. Don't worry. You'll see the right thing in a minute. Share screen. Possibly. Right. So hopefully you are seeing what I'm seeing and it will move over onto this picture in a minute. And as I said, I did this neck band because it initially on the first one, it covered an error I had made. And um, here it comes. And for this one, I actually I'm going to tell you what I did. I cut three long strips, one inch wide, and I just folded them wrong size together individually. So I had three strips, individual strips. I folded each one in half, wrong size together. And then I just stitched on the edge and I then braided it and made this neckline. But I have actually devised a simpler way to do it, which I think is much, much better. So let us look and see what we're going to do with it. So I've only done this on a knit top. I haven't tried it with a woven, but I believe it would work with bias cut strips. And actually, I'd really like to. And I think you could do things like weave beads in and, and fun things like that. And I think it would make just a stunning neckline. Now, the big, unless you're using a woven with a zip in the back, but if you're using a, a knit like a T-shirt, you have to use a scoop neck because... By the time you've added that braid, it's actually not that um, it's not that stretchy. So it needs to be big enough to go over your head. So that is a big consideration. So I measured the neckline of the T-shirt I had, and mine was about 29 inches. That's how long the braid needs to be when it's finished. So I cut out three strips of fabric, two inches, by the neckline measurement plus 12 inches. So about 41 because you're braiding them. So, you know, you're going to end up with less length at the end. And um, it's easier to cut some off than it is to add some on at that point. So be generous with your lengths and understand that it will also vary on how, how tightly you braid your braid. And so for this one, for tonight's one, I set up my machine for a three thread overlock narrow. My stitch width was five and my stitch length was two. And the decorative threads that I used were wonderful eleganza. And I used a variegated thread in the upper looper and a plain, a solid color in the lower looper, but just regular thread in my needle. And my differential was on 1.5 because heavy, threads on the edge of knits are definitely going to stretch the fabric and actually I'm not even sure I didn't put it no I put it at 1.5 which is actually too above normal so a little bit more than I normally do and this is the thread I used it's wonderful eleganza and it was eight weight and I used it in my upper and lower looper please note that they also do these um that thread on spools um like I've got pictured there and don't use the balls because the thread doesn't thread 
doesn't feed off very well for surging. So watch out with that. I use the 70 yard um, spool. So the secret to my success and your success is that I use the cording foot, which will give you a perfect sewn strip, all the same width. I mean, that's just amazing. You just have to keep the cording in the groove. Just make sure that your stitch is not sewing into the actual cord because we plan to pull it out after we've sewn the strip. And this is my favorite way of doing it because you can't mess it up, okay? That's my view on that one. You're gonna have a perfectly stitched um, strip. So cut your cording longer than you need. And I use 3 16 um, So I place the cording under the foot and I allow extra under the foot to keep the foot level. So it sticks out the back and I'll show you that in the demo. So don't worry about it. And then I'm just going to stitch it. And as I said, you have to ensure that your stitches don't go in the cording because then you can't pull out the cording. So to make that absolutely the case, if you use a narrow stitch, this should not be a problem, okay? Because it doesn't actually come that close to the cording. So here we have it. Um, after I've sewn it, I'm going to pull that cording out because I don't want three thicknesses of cording in my band. And I made two more strips. So I have three in total. And then I took those strips and I hand stitched them together at one end. I then placed them underneath my foot. And the only reason I do that is I'm not going to sew with it, but it acts like a third hand and it holds it for me while I do the braiding. Now, I'm not the world's greatest braider because I have boys and I'm always envious in class, <clears throat> excuse me, envious in class of all the people that do such wonderful braiding, okay? It's definitely one of those things that everybody has their own style. So after you've braided it, you're going to secure the end of it. Now let's go back to the t-shirt. The t-shirt, I turned over the neck on the t-shirt to the seam allowance. So say it was half an inch, I turned over half an inch and you can sew it down, but I just pressed it. And then you're going to check what size you actually need that finished braid. So you audition it onto the t-shirt and you're gonna find where they meet up. And you want to cut the braid one inch longer than you need because you're going to sew it together using a half inch escape from that. Right, good. And I'll take you back out of that one because I didn't mean to put that in there, as you, as you probably realized. Okay, so what I want to do now is just demo it, but I'm just going to have a quick look at the questions before I go there. Would love a baby lock dust cover pattern. I have one. I have one. It is, I don't know which machine you have, but if you go to my website and look um you'll find some covers and my website is debcanamstudio.com okay and you'll find patterns for covers so let's go back to comments i love that backpack yeah it's a fun backpack yep nancy wants to make the table runner are any online classes betty yes absolutely i I have to say that I ended up with more in-store events than I meant. Um, so it's really taken a hit on my online stuff, but I'm going to make sure that isn't the case. I have got um, quite a few events in the fall, but I'm going to get back to doing online classes. Um, I know there's some people waiting for the dotty bag and um, yes, I'm absolutely going to get back to online. Curious if the braid causes, causes the neckline to droop. Well, it's actually not all that heavy because I've used the same fabric. You could always use a different fabric. Um, but no, I wouldn't say it has. And um, no, I, it hasn't been a problem. But I can understand how you'd think it might be too heavy for some fabrics. But if you're using the same fabric, it should be fairly light. But let me know. Well, so here I have on the machine one I did earlier. And I think you'd agree, it's really quite pretty, even though I use bright orange t-shirt material to do it. But here it is. So how did I do it? 
Well, you'll see my machine here. I have the P5 cording foot. Now, on the Benina, that's called the piping foot, not the cording foot. But on the Baby Locks, it is the cording foot. It's the P5. And I'm going to take my cording, and it's a 3 16th. So it's not actually going to fill the whole of that um, groove under there. So I'm going to keep it fractionally to the left. It's not going to show a whole lot if I move it. But um, for sure, the stitches are not going to go in it because I've chosen a narrow stitch. So I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to work out which is the right side and which is the wrong. OK, so I'm going to put the right side down on the machine. And this is the right side, OK? So let me just get my foot on the camera. And I always think starting off with cording is always a little bit tricky because you have to get the cording up to the knife if possible. But the really important thing is you have to get the cording so it's coming out at the back of the machine because that levels your foot. And even then, you can occasionally have problem with it feeding through. So I'm just going to be aware of that. And I'm going to keep my cording way over to the left here and absolutely in the groove. OK, and if it doesn't start off perfectly, I'm not overly worried. Because I always say with surgery, if you're going to have an error, it's at the beginning or the end, never in the middle. So I've got my cording right where it needs to be. Now I've got all my fabric under the foot and I'm just going to keep it to the left. And you can hold it at the back, but just don't pull it. Only if you feel it stops. Mine's feeding now. It's on all the feed dogs. It's not going to misbehave. I'm not worried. It's only a problem sometimes at the start. So, And as I said, I have um, eight weight decorative thread in the upper looper and lower looper. I'm using three thread overlock narrow. I've got regular thread in the needle. My stitch width is um, five. My stitch length is two. But the most important thing is my differential feed is on 1.5 because when you start laying down heavy threads on the edge of a knit, it will stretch. OK. So there's my strip. And I've used the variegated thread, which I love. I think it really adds something to this. And then what you're going to do next is you're going to take your three strands. You're going to braid them together. You're going to finish them off at the ends. I just hand stitch them. You're going to try them on the T-shirt. You're going to get a different look both sides. You're going to try them on the T-shirt, work out where the ends match, sew them right sides together about half an inch down. And then just sew that onto your T-shirt. But I think it's very pretty. I do really. Even this orange one, I really like it. So let me look and see if I have any questions. Yeah, that bright orange that I'm sewing is it's a little bit more orangey than this. This has got this is like a really hot coral, or even a tomato. Um, whereas this is just a plain orange. But hey, it would look nice on this, wouldn't it? Look at that. Wouldn't be any good on this because, of course, I'm going to get my head in it. But if it had been a scoop neckline, I think you'd agree. It's quite pretty. I hadn't thought about it matching that. So after you sew it, you remove the cord, correct? Yes, I've, I failed to say that. When I sew each strip, like this strip here, let me get some scissors. You think I'd have some. So here's my strip I've just sewn and there's my cording in it and I would just pull it pull it through and hope that I haven't caught the stitches and I haven't because it's it's a narrow if it had been a wide I might have done so there it is and it just makes it softer and less heavy not to have the cording in it but you can see it's already started to curve so it's like perfect for braiding you're going to Trish Trish says, is, is it not too heavy with the cording added? Let me just bring Trish up. I'm sure she's got the answer now. Trish says, it's not too heavy with the cording added. You're going to take the cording out, 
okay the cording's just there to help you sew that perfect seam allowance you know where you can't go wrong see how it's perfect so yeah you would take the um you would take the cording out <laughs> i like that sp split screen i have no idea what i'm doing with this the trouble is i don't i don't get to practice enough that would be the cue on the top of a pocket yes it would and actually you know i'm just trying to find you to highlight you I think it, it would be very pretty on the bottom of sleeves. Um, I, I just think it's there to be used in some form, whether it's a neckline or I think sleeves would be stunning. Um, and of course, you know, you don't, on the sleeves, you don't have to make it tight, you know, you can, but it would look very pretty. And as I said, you could even um, braid some pearls in there, a string of, of you know, pearls. Did you put cording on the back of the T-shirt? Did you? No, I didn't put cording on the back of the T-shirt. Um, I just put that braided neckline on there. This has no cording in it now, and I would just hand sew it in place. Yeah, the single strip's not ugly, but then, you know, I mean, that would be quite nice. You know, I've got a, a binder. Let me, let me move. <clears throat> I've got a binder that does um, puts a neckband on and has piping. Now, of course, you know, it's not going to stretch. That piping is going to stabilize it. So that's a consideration. But um, say you don't want to use that, you could just put this down below the binding and um, have it on. So yeah, it's pretty. I like it. I even chose the right colors tonight. It's unusual. So, yeah, I just didn't want to use black because it flashes back. So, yes, that's pretty too. Would be cool as a jacket trim. Do you know another place I always think this would look super cool? It done in a silk or something, cut on the bias, would be on a Chanel jacket for trim. Um, it would be standing at that. Of course, I've got two Chanel jackets on the go. Not that I've got very far with them lately, but um, I think. A, a very um, fine silk or even an organza or something like that would make terrific braid to go on my Chanel jacket. So yes. With the thickness to it, how, how would you search the neckline new to garment making? That's a good question. It has to be hand sewn. That's your only real option. Um, and that was a great question, Leanne. So. What is the color of the thread? Ah, well, I don't know. It has a number. It's the blues and greens. And I can tell you that it, the, the variegated is um, Easy M46. And then I used a light green, a light green to get that um, on the very edge which matches the variegated but if you look it's got a very light green beading stitch on the edge because i love that effect and that was it's called after dinner mint i think and it is easy 30. okay thank you ruth so yes i th i think that's a fun project and, and you know it's it's something you can do on the serger that you can't do on the sewing machine. You, you can finish the edges and make them look decorative. And there's more ways to use it than just sewing around an edge. I don't have a piping foot for my serger. Could I use a sewing machine with a piping foot to sew first, then I use my overlocker to complete? Well, the trouble with that, the trouble with that is you actually don't have a pretty finished stitch on the edge of your piping. OK, it doesn't matter which surgery you have, you will have a cording foot for it. OK. So Deanne says she thinks it would look great on a jean jacket, the bottom edge of a little girl's dress skirt. Yes, it would. And it would be um, it would add a little bit of weight sometimes to places where you need weight, like a, a Chanel jacket. So. So you made three different strips to braid together with the third seam showing. So Kathy, yes, I did, but let's let's 
let's say that it was decorative thread I used, so it looks very pretty. I didn't use regular serger thread. I, I used decorative thread to make it, you know, more more of a what's the word? Ornamental, decorative. Yeah. Somebody said, do you apply the braid? Let's have a look. Do you apply the braid to the raw edges of the shirt or do you have to hem it first? You would have to make this trim first and then apply it to whatever you're doing. OK, you couldn't do it on the raw edge of a shirt because it's three strips of um, that you need to braid. Diane says she missed the start. What weight of thread was it? It is eight weight thread. And if you've missed anything or there's something you didn't quite understand, the written notes are in my group, which is. I like this bit. This is one of the bits I can do, possibly. Facebook, my Facebook group, Deb Canham Surge of Sanity Projects. If you go into that group, you will find written files. And they're basically my slideshow. So that may help you. Delayed flights, Kim. I hope, I hope you get a flight soon. Somebody's birthday tomorrow and they're getting a machine. It's my son Sam's birthday tomorrow too. Good day. Hi, Diane. I, you like my accent. <laughs> it's the only one I've got. <laughs> okay. So I think we're just about 